So we are checking out here the clear ink e-paper with color and with video. So this is the first time it's been shown. Yes, uh, I'm Sri Perwemba uh, at uh, Clear Ink. Um, I've had the good fortune of working on a number of different uh, display technologies. Uh, I'm happy to share with you uh, a revolutionary new uh, uh, electronic paper technology. Uh, historically, electronic paper has had the following uh, benefits. It's usually low power. Uh, it's usually sunlight readable. It's thin, it's light, so on and so forth. But historically, uh, most of the reflective uh, technologies have had the challenge of uh, offering color, have had the challenge of offering video. And this is a technology that is able to do that. It's based on uh, electrophoretic technology. Um, let me explain to you from uh, on the right, you have the very first demo. This is the first time ever showing these demos in public. Uh, this particular product is running video, uh, it's running uh, 30 frames per second uh, video, and uh, we are rotating the display just to show that the off-axis um, viewing is excellent, right? Uh, in a lot of uh, LCD type technologies, when you go off-axis, you lose contrast and you lose the image quality, and in many cases, you cannot see the image at all. And this one looks absolutely gorgeous off-axis. Rather than you go off-axis, we have this uh, mechanism to move the display uh, uh, and you, you're able to uh, see the uh, display at different angles. And it's, uh, this looks like full video. This full, uh, it's like... It's absorbing particle. We actually turn it, it is indeed. Right. So this is um, a, a electrophoretic black and white um, display with a color filter approach. So the color filter goes on top of the black and white display to produce this uh, color. And obviously, it's a very fast uh, uh, display. It's, uh, this one is running uh, at also 30 frames per second to show you this video. So the nice thing about putting color filter on top of your display is it's much more easy to manufacture, and you can mass produce this at pretty reasonable cost. How many colors can there be? Uh, the current version is very simple. We are only showing like eight colors, but the intent is to go to uh, 40, 96 colors in the future, which may be adequate for many of the applications targeted. So if you look at the kind of applications where there is a need for such a product, is that in electronic school books, okay, there is a great opportunity in the market for e-school books, and historically it hasn't taken off because uh, the students want to view content, which is also video content, uh, but also read, be able to read text, preferably on the same page. You have text and video all in one, and that's something you can enable this technology as a demo where I will show you. And here's a video, and you can see the black and white contrast is pretty tremendous. To give you an idea, the white state reflectance of this display is well over 80%. Right? This is almost double of what you have typically seen in the industry, and uh, this is what gives this particular technology the opportunity to put a color filter on top and still render pretty decent colors. So the whites are the best that there is on a reflective display? Absolutely. The best? Absolutely. And the blacks? And the blacks are also very good. Uh, they're comparable with uh, uh, similar other um, uh, reflective technology. So when you look at this one, is that the, the best they can do, or in terms of uh, reading quality? Um, is this so is an early prototype or what? These are hand-built prototypes built in the lab. Very little has been optimized because obviously you know you need to build these uh, uh, different subcomponents for this particular application. These were all purchased off the shelf, assembled very quickly and you still got a pretty decent uh, uh, rendition of the product. Here in this particular example, there's a combination of text and uh, moving animation on the same display. And this is what is the need in wearable type applications, in applications like school books and so on that I previously so mentioned. So for e-school books, for uh, wearables like this, uh, how does it get manufactured? When is it gonna, is it gonna be mass manufactured? How is it gonna be done? Yeah, so uh, this is a technology which uses uh, a front plane and a back plane. The back plane basically comes, it's a TFT uh, back plane, comes from the LCD industry. This product has been configured such that you can manufacture the whole thing in an LCD factory. As you know, the LCD factories, many of them are fully depreciated. They know how to manufacture product for, uh, they've been doing so for many decades. You're able to uh, uh, build a product in high volume in a, a factory that is uh, quite seasoned, if you will. So that is the benefit of this technology. You can adapt to an existing process and an existing factory.
how soon? Uh, how, what's the next step? This is the first time it's being shown, and what happens now? First time it's shown. We are trying to get market feedback, and uh, also there is engagement with customers. The first set of customers have already licensed the product. The company has generated three million dollars in licensing revenue for this technology in uh, some uh, uh, some of the uh, display applications, and this will continue. Even before the product was uh, publicly shown, uh, the company is able to generate revenue, and the interest in this technology is tremendous. It's been there for the last few years that we want low power. This operates on five volts, so it's ultra low power uh, display technology. We want very thin and light, so you put them on wearable devices, you know, it's not going to uh, impose a weight uh, restriction on you. Similarly, um, the power consumption is extremely important in all of these applications when they're mobile. This consumes roughly about 1% or less of the power consumed by a typical TFT LCD, backlit LCD technology. 1%, so it's not bi-stable? Uh, it can be bi-stable. It can be bi-stable. Yeah, absolutely, it can absolutely be bi-stable. Uh, the company has produced uh, devices that are bi-stable. These examples you see here are not bi-stable. They're uh, deliberately set up to run video because bi-stable product exists in the market and has been shown, whereas a product like this showing uh, full motion video and yet very low power and ability to show color and animation and everything together on a single page has not been done before, and which is why uh, uh, these demos were chosen. When it gets mass produced, is it possible to do uh, one device that does buy stable and full video and Absolutely. color? It's, Absolutely. It will be one device. So, depending on the application, you can render this product to do many different things. And um, uh, for a, I'll give you a, a typical application in a shelf label. A portion of that shelf label is not going to change with animation or video, you're mostly going to change the contents, let's say once a day. Right? That could be your bi-stable product. Alongside, you could have uh, full motion video. So you're running ads and things like that. So a full motion video like this would be 1% of an LCD? Uh, full motion video on this will not be 1% of LCD, it'll be more, but it'll still be significantly lower than LCD uh, in terms of power consumption. But I think the beauty of this is going to be on the same display being able to generate both uh, uh, video and text all in one. And that's what the market has been asking for and uh, this is a product that will absolutely be able to meet those types of requirements. But it's not possible to do millions of colors, maybe 4,000 uh, 4, colors. Uh, it is possible to do a lot of colors when you do grayscale and then uh, adapt these color filters. But I'm saying for the applications that are chosen, 4096 colors appear to be adequate. We're only doing eight colors here just to demonstrate the concept and it looks, looks uh, pretty gorgeous and it is possible to do much more. There's no backlight. There is no backlight. It's Everything you're seeing is based on the light from, uh, from uh, the outdoors so this ambient is, uh, light. And the display will still look very good in very low ambient light as well. Um, the other advantage with this technology is it will readily adapt itself for flexible substrates. You can make a uh, roll-to-roll -roll product with this technology and you can make flexible uh, displays a reality with this technology. So flexible, unbreakable is possible? Of course, since it will be made on uh, a substrate other than glass, then uh, it is going to be shatterproof. That's awesome. So uh, this is a new, uh, new, new stuff happening and potentially will enable all these kids to go outside yeah, and one of the, uh, do one their of, stuff outdoors. One of the challenges we have is kids are spending a lot more time indoors and there is belief that their eyesight deteriorates because they're not spending enough time in the sunlight. So, well, if you want to spend time uh, in the sunlight as a student and you are... Um, uh, you know, you still have to take your textbook outside and uh, um, do the reading and do your homework and be interact with the teacher and so on. An e-reader device will be suitable and to make the e-reader device um, uh, work outdoors, you do absolutely need to have sunlight readable uh, type devices which are extremely low power, be able to generate videos um, uh, so the students can enjoy rich content as well as text which is obviously uh, very essential uh, in this kind of a reading environment. So if there's big investments coming, this could happen very quickly, right? It can happen very quickly. The interest is pretty high. Uh, Clearing has signed up uh, manufacturing partnerships with uh, very large LCD companies that are in trial production right now. And those devices will come into the market in the next few months uh, to prove out the technology, prove out the manufacturing, and uh, enable this for mass production.